Um, if, if I want to insert... Sorry, silent. <laughs> If I want to insert a contract into the blockchain, then um, so I'm basically sending this out to the peer-to-peer -peer network. Then nodes are free to accept my contract, yes or no? Uh, so no, every node like will basically accept your contract, and your contract can even be broken into little pieces. Uh, but it, it, uh, when pieces of your contract reside somewhere, <coughs> they won't be executed, as far as I know. Mm -hmm. But I still have to get into the details of that, but I, I don't think they'll be executed. I think that when your entire contract is on one of the nodes, it will be run, and uh, in that on, way, on, on that node, I think on that node. But okay. then again, they might have been very smart about this and actually made it possible to run certain lines of code on one node and certain lines on the other, and make it just communicate fast enough. But if I was to write it, I wouldn't do it because of the network effects, and it would take a lot of bandwidth eventually. But I, I would have to dig into that to find out how, that, how they do that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I suspect that the contract, because most contracts are, are never going to exceed even a megabyte. Probably most contracts won't even exceed a kilobyte in storage space. And that is because it will be very expensive to run mm -hmm. such a big contract. So it's much easier to just uh, make sure that there's uh, thousands of copies of the contract everywhere and that they can be run at any moment on any place at any time. And then the cost will be deducted on that node, and the miners will receive that uh, amount. I think I will need to read the right paper. Yeah, I, I, I would definitely do that. It's a, it's a worthwhile read, and it's not too difficult. Uh, more questions? Yeah, I, I want to add on the um, this point Aaron was making. So the um, the fact that the, so there's this kind of key mining. Um, an argument in favor of pre-mining is that the way Bitcoin grew organically, uh, so you had um, people mining with really poor, I mean, really cheap hardware in the beginning, yeah, yeah. and accumulating um, um, disproportionately high wealth, yeah. um, and then reinvesting them because I mean Bitcoin grew because of people getting rich early and then investing that into the ecosystem, starting businesses, sponsoring development, etc. That, that's no longer possible in this world because what the guys, the protoshares, try to do is um, they tried the same with Bitcoin, but what they saw was that um, so they issued, so they la launched the uh, the, the protoshares blockchain. Mm -hmm. And they lost control because you had all of those people with uh, expensive hardware uh, mining all the uh, protoshares, yeah. and the protoshares organization didn't have any protoshares themselves, so they couldn't sponsor development anymore. So that's why, even if you're, I mean, even if you're. Um, but well, they also try to be fair about it, but which I think is a commandment. Yeah, well, well, then yeah. they they try this new mechanism, uh, issuing shares with Bit shares, angel, yeah. Uh, yeah. an angel and, share. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, if even if, if you're totally honest, um, it's not possible anymore to start an eco a Bitcoin-like ecosystem uh, nowadays. True. It's not. Uh, at least, and never, never it will become as big as Bitcoin in that mm -hmm. sense. Uh, although Litecoin did a reasonably good job, and uh, it also started out like Bitcoin, but it, it's becoming more and more difficult. So, but there is a way around that problem, and that is called proof of burn, and that's what Counterparty did. Mm -hmm. So Counterparty said, okay, we want so many coins in our ecosystem, we're going to do a proof of stake, but if we want to do it honestly proof of stake, we have to actually um, prove that they're worth as much as that we say they are. And so what they did is they burned 21 bitcoins, uh, just got people together to invest at least 21 bitcoins, they burned them, and then they, that's the amount of, of um, counterparty units that they started with. And so people knew, okay, these are exactly, these total counterparty units are now worth 21 bitcoins. So people could buy them or try and mine them, and, and that's how they actually basically booted that economy. And eventually more people stepped in, so then because of scarcity, these 21 bitcoins became worth more, just sure. like with Bitcoin. Can you compare this with the fact uh, with the $10,000 pizza? Yeah, I mean, you know the, tra the famous transaction, they 
did it just to see that it, yeah, yeah that they had to figure out some kind of worth on the Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It basically looks the same way, but they did it a bit more professionally because we've already passed the phase of, of that extreme pioneer, yeah. uh, uh, pioneering of, of, of cryptocurrency. So they said, okay, everybody knows how this works. So if we prove that we actually burn those Bitcoins by sending them to an irretrievable address, and that's what they did, and everybody can check in the blockchain. Those Bitcoins are staying at that address forever. They're lost. Nobody can get them. Nobody has the private key. And um, uh, by doing that, uh, it was basically made it possible for people to, uh, uh, to retrieve them. And thus, the Bitcoins were actually burned. People actually put in money. So that money was already a starting, a, boost, a booster start for the counterparty uh, economy. And that worked. So that can be done. So there is a danger of Bitcoins being burned to start new economies. And let's say, I don't think it will happen, but in the most extreme case, what if you burn all Bitcoins and we start all these new economies? By the way, way, is this now the minimum value of counterparties? So let's say if the value of counterparty uh, uh, decreases, would I be able to create counterparty coins for myself by burning Bitcoin again? So, so just like the founders did. Uh, so that, does it lay... Uh, the floor? It could only be done at the genesis of okay. the counterparty, mm -hmm. which was actually a good start. Yeah. Since that time, uh, because, uh, well, actually, that's a good question. Uh, because I'm, I'm thinking there is a way at this moment to exchange counterparties, coins, and bitcoins, literally. So perhaps they're still using proof of burn, but mm -hmm. I, I don't think that would be logical because you could actually be burning coins all the time. That would be taking. Coins out of both economies. Yeah, but it, I would, think it, it would make sense. That, so. It would make sense if the value of counterparty was higher than the initial value at the moment of burn, when there was no access in it. Yeah, that's yeah, true. Any other questions? Uh, then we can uh, go for a drink. That might be a good idea. <laughs> All right. Okay. Then. <laughs> Screen <laughs> saver. It's <laughs> a big applause for our <laughs> Weet je wat, uh, wat is, weet je die dingen? Okay. 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 